Hey guys, my client drove a few hours up to see me so we could tone down her hair and give her this really pretty mushroom brown color that she's been wanting to have. So to see how we tackled the service, keep watching. You can follow me on Instagram at Christy at the cottage. All right, here's my client's before, and I also want to say that we did give her a good trim and layered her hair just to get rid of some of those dead ends before we started the color. All right, so the client that I'm working on today wants to do mushroom brown. So we we're kind of thinking maybe we don't have to lighten through some of her ends because she's kind of sitting at like maybe a level eight, but she wants to brighten it up a little bit. So I think we're, oh my God, I'm trying to get my station. I forgot I locked my thing. Oh my God, I need to go get my key. Um. Anyways, uh, so we're gonna lighten her hair up a little bit just to do like maybe some lighter mushroom, cooler tones through the ends, but then like blend her roots and all of that stuff. So, um. I need to go get my key and unlock my stuff, but to start the service, um, we're gonna use Schwarzkopf Wami with 20 volume and Olaplex, and then just start like painting through the ends. All right, so here's her before again, and you can see that she has a few inches of grow out. So she's wanted to try this mushroom brown, mushroom brond color for a while and she just hasn't been able to achieve it. So I wasn't thinking that we needed to lighten her hair, but she did say she wants to have a few little brighter pieces. So I thought maybe we should just go through and brighten up a little bit just so she has a little bit more dimension instead of feeling just all over one tone. So we're going to go through and... Do some pretty large sections her hair is very fine so it's okay to take a little bit thicker of a section when balayaging so we're kind of doing some zigzag pieces just going straight across these next few sections we're gonna go um kind of the sides of her head and then work our way up so that's what we're gonna do to start the service and i'm really not bleaching up and feathering into her roots just basically up into the line of demarcation One thing that I've had people comment on is how they get like splotchiness in their application and they ask how do I prevent that from happening and you can see that I use the board and I'm fully saturating the hair. I'm not just like surface painting where sometimes if you surface paint you have like a thicker section then sometimes if you press too hard or your application isn't that amazing, sometimes you're pushing the bleach down a little bit too far into the section of hair that you're painting, which can cause splotchiness. And usually my clients want a little bit brighter of blonde um, or higher definition of pieces. So that's why I like to fully saturate my pieces that I'm painting which is why I'm using a board and it's a very rare occasion that you would ever see me actually just do like open air balayage. So I'm fully saturating the sections and then just right up um, to make sure that it blends the top maybe inch is where I start feathering and don't fully saturate in that area. So everything else has full saturation of bleach and the way that I also help um, get a good blend with my sectioning is doing like a zigzag parting and then I weave it and back comb it and usually all of those together really help ensure that you have a good blend with your balayage, foliage, whatever and hopefully that will prevent having like any huge streakiness or helps you get a better blend in the root area or whatever. Um, those are usually the only things that I can suggest. A lot of people always ask me how to get a better blend and other than, you know, those few things that I mentioned, I really don't know 
what else you could do other than just keep practice, 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 like get a mannequin, maybe try diagonal sectionings or whatever. Um, just keep practicing until you guys get better because I can tell you right now, like I'm not the best surface painter, um, for balayage. Like I think there's some really great people that do blonding balayage and I feel like that's not one of my strongest points. That's why you'll always see me do more of like a foliage because I feel like it's more, I feel like I can anticipate what's going to happen with the lift and everything. So as far as, um, how to prevent splotchiness and how to get a better blend, this is the way that I usually do my application for most of my services. Now that I'm working my way up to the top of the crown area, I'm going to be doing a little bit of less subsections and doing some finer pieces, not such big sections. And that's because I want to make sure that we have a little bit more detail in this area. It's going to be like right on top. So I just want to make sure everything's, you know, perfect. So even though we're going to be toning down, I just like to make sure that you get these fine details in there. So these next few sections here, I'm going to be doing a little bit smaller sections just to make sure that everything looks and lays nicely. And normally I would do my hairline foils if somebody wanted to be like really bold and bright around the face, but because she just wants to stay where she's at and just brighten up more through the ends of the hair, um, we're not going to be going around her hairline or every, anything. She wants to be able to just let it grow and not have to worry about it. So I'm not going to paint the pieces that are directly like off of her forehead because those are already pretty light. So I'm going to pull those pieces aside just to be safe. Anything that's already super blonde, I'm not going to go over because I want to make sure that we don't damage the hair. So these blonde pieces on her hairline, like the money piece area, I'm not going to paint through those. So um, we're just going to, I'm going to jump back and forth from side to side, but I'm, I'm only going to show you this one side that I'm doing here. And again, because we're not trying to lighten a whole bunch, we're just trying to brighten up a little bit through her hair. Um, doing the foil or doing the balayage this way goes really quickly because we're not trying to get like a whole bunch of lift. We just want to lighten up, you know, maybe like two shades or something, but we're not trying to go for super ashy, icy blonde. So we don't have to make sure that like she's a perfect 10 everywhere. So you can see those blonde pieces that are right on the forehead. I just kind of push those aside to make sure that we don't cause any damage. And then we're just going to do a few pieces through the top here also and then maybe just go through the ends and tip out some of the end pieces just to give a little bit more brightness more of like an ombre through the ends and then that will be it for our bleaching application
All right, and this is everything that we did for our application. Pretty heavy, full foliage, but you know, she still has enough of her natural going through, so that will be the dimensional pieces that we go back through and add the color to. Um, now we're gonna go through and just check the foils and see how she's processing. It's probably been about 30 minutes or so. So now we're gonna pull these foils out, do a conditioning treatment, and we're gonna go back and talk about our formulation for toner. Okay, so my client is sitting at the shampoo while we just washed her out. And I have her sitting with a Guy Tang uh, like collagen repair spray just on the ends that sits on for like five minutes. Let's see. I feel like her hair lifted really nicely. So we're going to try to do a really pretty, really cool, um, maybe not like super, super ashy, but just like a nice, cool, lighter blonde color just to break up the hair a little bit more. So I think I'm gonna go in with, she's still very warm, so I need to go in mostly with like a level nine, I think. So let's see here. Um, okay, let me look. Okay, I got my formulation. So we're gonna go through with Paul Mitchell, the demi, and we're gonna start with 9V, 9PA, and just a little bit of the 9NB. Um, I feel like that has a nice pretty warmth to it and it will prevent the ashier tones from like over depositing and just grab, grabbing super gray or violet or whatever. So um, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I'm doing about equal parts of the 9V and 9PA and just like a really small bit of the 9NB. So because she does want to keep her hairline a little bit brighter, I'm pulling all around her hairline aside for like the last five minutes of the toner application. So everything else will process for probably like 10 minutes or so. And then at 10 minutes, I'll start running her hairline through the rest of the the rest or throwing the toner through the rest of her hairline and then that will finish for like the last five minutes um for the 15 total and this is the guy tang collagen repair that is a spray and i'm putting this on especially through her ends just kind of throughout because we're gonna go through and do her darker color and then we're gonna do some Olaplex too. And this is gonna create a little bit of a barrier, not just, you know, obviously this is gonna be really good for conditioning her hair and all of that stuff, but it will help prevent over depositing or causing splotchiness or whatever. It will create a barrier from the color application that we're gonna mix for. Okay, so we just got done doing her lightest toner all over. And the reason why I like starting with the lightest toner first is because um, obviously she has a lot of warmth in her hair. So we wanna try and keep the lightest color like as much as possible, but wherever she has like, um, like level eight brassy areas, then I'll know to run a toner through that. But if I, like weave out colors and start with my darkest going to my lightest then what if i already do my darkest color and then you know i weaved out some level eight brassy areas and now the level nine ten toner isn't going to cool it down then i have to go back through with like um a level eight again so i like kind of i like working the lightest and then toning down darker as i go so um we're going to be doing her probably like level 7, 8 mushroomy tone now. Um, I'm going to be using Schwarzkopf Agora Vibrance, but the stuff just grabs so ashy. I really need to be careful. Um, I'm going to use a lot of a natural level and then I'm going to do... Um, Probably only half of my formulation will be the ashier tone just because it is it just grabs so much and I don't want it to go green or whatever like that that happens and then I have to keep readjusting and whatever. 
So um, I need to learn my lesson and just stick to only using half of the formulation or less than half even of an ashier tone. Okay, I figured it out. So what I'm gonna use and keep in mind that the beauty supply store has like limited colors available. So I'm gonna be using a level nine but it's only because I want the natural tone to it. There wasn't like seven natural or eight natural. And I don't have any of that. So um, I'm adding level nine to my formulation, but that's only because I want the natural tone. So probably half of my formulation is going to be this level nine. Um, and then I found this a uh, 7-4, which is like a medium blonde beige, which I think will be good from making this too ashy of a mushroom color. I think it will kind of soften it and make it more of like a beigeier mushroom. So that will be pretty with this, the 7-4. And then I'm going to go in with 8-1-1, and this will be like a double ash, so it will cool it down really nicely. And then because I had to add that level nine in there just to give it a little bit more depth um not necessarily to like cool it down but just to darken it a little bit and add a little bit more of a slight cooler depth to it i'm going to go in with 612 and i'm really just going to be doing a quick little drop i'm not going to be like doing a quarter of an ounce or anything like that i'm just going to add this to counteract a little bit of the lighter shade of the natural um and i'll be mixing it with agora vibrance um six ball all right so just a smidge of the 612 half of my formulation is the level nine and then you know, probably equal parts of the 74 and 811 and just a smidge of the 612. So, you're going to be able to see that I'm applying this color pretty much everywhere from like the line of demarcation in her root area like through the midsection I'm not really pulling it through the ends and that's because I'm okay with it if it if it tones down it's gonna tone down like the top half of the hair like in the root area and everything and that's because usually when you're doing like a foliage or balayage that um probably transition area gets a little bit warm generally so I feel like it's okay to tone it down but you'll see that I'm not running it through the ends yet just because I don't want it to grab and I want to obviously keep those areas lighter so I'm just going to run it through the midsection in the root area leave the ends out until like the last few minutes and then if I happen to see something that's a little bit brassier that needs to be cooled down, and then I'll kind of pick through some of those areas and paint it through those level eight tones.
All right, now that we've applied this everywhere, but we want to blend her money piece, I'm just going to lay this foil on top just to prevent any color transfer. And I'm just going to apply this right at the line of demarcation in this money piece area and just swipe it up. She really wants to preserve this brightness that she has. You can kind of see her looking like, uh, girl, you ain't toning this down too much. I think that's funny. I didn't notice that before. Um, but yeah, we're going to try to preserve this as, as much as possible, but we do want to blend out that harsh line of grow out just right in the very front. So, um, I actually thought that I might have to, oh, really quickly. So the last five minutes I done, I did comb that toner all the way through the ends just to kind of help it blend a little bit more. And then I thought that I was going to go through and do like another shade right at the, root area just to kind of blend out any line of demarcation that might still be there but she actually was really happy with how it blends with her roots already so she wanted to leave it and not go through and add like a darker shade just in the root area because she might feel like it be it might be too dark so here's her hair showed you it was kind of just air dried and now we styled it so you can see those different tones showing through and she still has those nice brighter pieces especially through the ends but you can still see lots of dimensions lots of dimension through the top section of her hair. So um, yeah, we're just gonna finish the styling part of the service. All right, how is that color looking? I love it. Oh my God, it's so ashy, I'm yeah. obsessed. Yay. It looks so good. So I'm so happy that she likes her hair so much. She really, really loves the color. Here's her before again. And I forgot how bright it was and how brassy it was. So I'm really glad that we were able to accomplish a really pretty mushroom color that she was really wanting. And everything blends really nicely and we were able to keep it brighter up towards the front area. There's that money piece that we were just trying to blend a little bit. But you can see it's still nice and bright towards, you know, the top of her hairline. Um, she was really happy with the end result. It was like the perfect mushroom tone for her and she was really happy with everything. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. I was really happy with how it turned out and I thought you guys would like this. So thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.